Last year I entered a bridge building competition and did quite well. So I thought I'd do a video on my design and how I built it. A little bit about the competition. Fieldhouse Engineering ran a series of challenges in 2021 with a thousand pound prize for the winner of each one. The bridge building competition was 100 gram maximum weight to cover a 360 millimeter span and the bridge that held the maximum load won. This video is about how I built my entry archetype, an all carbon fibre bridge. I started off discussing designs with Simon, trying to think of things that would be easy to build, hopefully using mostly off the shelf parts. I came up with a few involving tubes and carbon string or tow, but I, I wasn't pleased how optimised they were. They were all they were all quite crude. So I started playing around with truss shapes, modified I beams and spoked wheel type designs and I really liked the, the spoked design it's incredibly materially efficient uh, the final element simulation and hand calcs showed that it could take many tons of force much higher than any aluminium or metal bridge could here's the materials I'd be working with I've got some slow and fast cure epoxy resin uh, some unidirectional carbon fibre fabric and, and some carbon tow. It's worth saying a bit about costs here. Carbon fibre is traditionally very expensive and I did see a lot of places it was £500 a kilogram but with a bit of shopping around I managed to find places that the tape and the epoxy together came to £100 a kilogram which is still quite a lot but given the bridge only weighs 100 grams I expected I'd only need about £30 worth of material um, to go into it, what with the wastage inevitable of mixing pots and cutting things off. Uh, the reason for the slow and fast cure resin is because the um, the working life can change quite a bit as well as the cure time for the different hardeners. So slow cure will give you longer working time but it'll take much longer to harden. The slower cures tend to be stronger so it's better to use the slow cure when you can. Now, unfortunately, I spent too long in the design phase and didn't quite leave myself enough time for the number of cure cycles I was going to have to go through. But at the same time, I knew some of the assembly jobs were quite fiddly and would take quite a while, so I'd need a long pot life. So I knew I needed to do something to speed things up, but we'll come to that. The plan for the build was to CNC a mould out of HTPE to form the arches, the main arches of the bridge, and then use a lacing jig to hold those arches in position with some 3D prints and some wood while I wrapped the tension elements around it. It's quite a bit of new process here for me. I've used metal tools before with composites in work, but I've not used plastic ones. I was hoping the plastic would help the epoxy release better. And I've not done open mould tensile elements before. Now, I've normally done things that are squashed with a vacuum or uh, within a closed tool so I wasn't quite sure how that would work but I found some papers online that suggested it it worked okay and it seemed much easier than any other way of assembling it. Here's the bit of plastic I was going to use for the mould. It's a bit of a funky shape, it's an offcut from Deadlock robot build and I thought the archers would only just fit on it. So from this photo, modelled it up in CAD and use that to position the, the mould exact, exactly where I needed it on the, on the work in Fusion. Here's the tool paths in Fusion. Uh, because the arches are quite slender, the channel to form them is quite narrow, so it's a lot of machining with a small cutter. Fusion's adaptive clearing technique uses trachoidal milling, which is where you use lots of fast little nibbles rather than a slow full width cut. I was really pleased with how the tool came out. There's some tiny little burrs, but on the whole it was it was a clean finish. I've since learnt that HTP cuts much better if you take aggressive cuts. Whereas with most materials you get a nicer finish if you sneak up on the final surface. HTPE seems to work better if you just aggressively go at it and the deep cuts have the best surface finish and least burrs. With the mould machined, we could get on with the build. First job was to put some plastic sheet down on the worktop to protect it and then apply a release agent to the mould. I went quite overkill with this because uh, getting parts stuck in the mould is really annoying. 
So uh, as well as it being slippery plastic, I uh, applied some wax and tried to rub wax into the surface and, and a thin film of Vaseline. Then I cut the unidirectional carbon down to size, mixed up the epoxy, wetted the strips and put them in the mould. This didn't go as easily as I'd hoped. I'd made the mould plenty deep enough for the finished part, but the unconsolidated uh, fibres with excess resin was much bigger and they wouldn't, they wouldn't sit flat in the mould and they didn't leave enough room for my green 3D printed kind of compression elements to fit in. So it took two of us and a lot of wrestling to get it in place. Once we got the fibres in the mould and we got the 3D printed formers on top, we clamped a sheet of clear plastic over that to uh, compress the whole assembly. This worked all right, you could see the epoxy squeezing out here. So we're getting rid of the excess resin, getting the fibres close together and making a stronger, lighter part. As I mentioned before, I didn't allow myself quite enough time for all the cure cycles. Uh, the slow resin can take 30 hours to cure, as I wanted to be able to work on it again first thing the next day. So I thought I'd put it under a heat lamp, because uh, the cure time is uh, significantly speeded up with a little bit of heat. When I came back to it the next day though, I found I'd been a bit keen with the heat lamp and the HTPE had melted. Oops. The archers demolded okay though, but they came out warped, which is a bit of a problem for their structural integrity. But they were also underweight, I think probably because we struggled to get enough material in the mould. So to try and fix both, I decided to add extra wraps of carbon fibre toe in alternating left hand and right hand helixes, and then compress them with heat shrink and clamp them flat for curing. They seemed to work okay. Then it was time to make the lacing jig. I roughly bandsawed this out of an old fence post and then CNC'd the critical features. I was really pleased with how the jig came out. It worked great for aligning the archers ready for the lacing. For lacing the tension elements, I made up some rope by twisting together the right number of strands of carbon toe and then fed them around the jig. I was quite worried about the lacing as uneven tension would lead to premature failure, but it was quite easy with the jig to keep plucking the different strings until they were all even tension. Threading the bracing was much the same process. Although I made a bit of a mistake really, because the bridge came out quite underweight. And with the warped archers, I should have done extra bracing. For wetting out the lacing and bracing, I mixed up some epoxy, uh, brushed it on, and then smeared it with my fingers to make sure it was fully impregnated. And this is how it came off the jig. A little bit furry, but on the whole, well wetted out and intact. The last step was to sand the ends of the archers flat, make some little feet, and glue them on. Here's the finished bridge, and here's how it did at the competition. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 <laughs>